This video covers how to shoot slow motion video of pool shots with a smartphone. It also uses this technique to look at how to get stop, draw, and follow with jump shots at various Q elevations. I'm Dr. Dave, and I filmed the video with Jeremiah Gage. The smartphone we used is an iPhone 6. To record in slow motion, touch camera, then swipe to select slow-mo, and make sure the frames per second, or FPS, is at the highest value. If it displays 120, touch to change it to 240. To film a shot, support the phone on the table or rail and touch the red record button. Press. After the shot, stop the recording with the red square. If you touch the image in the corner, the video will come up in the Photos app. Here, you can change the start and stop points of the video and change which portion is in slow motion. To see the whole video in slow motion, drag the second row sliders to the extremes. Now if you touch the play triangle, you can view the entire video in slow motion. After you have all of your shots filmed, you should prepare the files for download to a computer. To do this, first enter the Photos app, touch on the camera roll, and select a clip to edit. First drag the yellow arrows at the top to indicate the desired start and stop points in the video. You can touch the play button to make sure you have what you want. Then touch trim to remove the unwanted parts of the video. To be able to transfer an iPhone slow motion video to a computer, you first need to convert it to a standard video file. You can use the free app iMovie to do this. If you don't have it yet, you will need to download it from the App Store. To do a conversion, select the video, touch the Share icon, and select Create Movie. Then touch the back arrow, since we don't need to edit the movie. Then touch the Share icon, select Save Video, and select HD 720p for full resolution. This will store the slow motion video in standard form in your photo library. When done, you can delete the movie project. Now if you go back to the Photos app, you can view the created video that is suitable for download to a computer. You will notice that the play time for the converted video is longer than the original video. You might want to play the video again just to make sure it looks good. If you don't follow the procedure we just outlined and try to download the original video to a computer, it won't transfer as a slow motion clip. Now we're ready for the second part of the video where we use the method just outlined to film various types of jump shots. We're using both a digital video camera on a tripod viewing the entire shot and the iPhone to get slow motion close-ups. We will demonstrate how to get stop, draw, and follow with jump shots of different cue elevations. We're starting with a baby jump where we only need to clear a gap between two balls. In other words, we need to jump over only the edge of a ball. As you can see, the cue ball can't fit through the gap between the two obstacle balls. With a baby jump, you can use your normal playing cue, and you can create the stop, draw, and follow just like you normally do. You just need to use modest cue elevation and enough speed to get the jump height required. This is a shot from a game of 8-ball shooting stripes. Here, we need to get a stop shot to get position on the 8 for the win. To get stun at the object ball, you need to hit slightly below center. If you don't, the cue ball will pick up some top spin from the first bounce and any subsequent bounces on the way to the object ball. Here's the shot. In slow motion, you can clearly see the jump height created by the cue elevation and speed. You can also see the backspin on the cue ball, most of which wears off when the cue ball lands and bounces before hitting the object ball. Here it is again with slow motion sound. Here, we need to draw to get position on the 8. Here's the shot. Notice the below center hit and the backspin created. Some of this is lost when the cue ball lands and bounces before the object ball, but enough remains for draw. Here's a larger view of a similar shot. Notice how little jump height is required to clear the obstacle ball gap. 
Also try to notice how some of the backspin is lost as the cue ball bounces. It is easy to follow with a jump shot since the cue ball naturally picks up topspin every time it bounces while moving forward, including the first bounce off the tip. Here, with the slightly above center hit, we get more follow than we need. In slow motion, notice the slightly above center hit. Also try to notice how the cue ball picks up topspin off the first bounce off the tip and on subsequent bounces. Here's another example with less follow. And here's another example with even less follow. Notice how the hit is actually slightly below center. This creates near stun after the first bounce off the tip, and the second and third bounces add the top spin that results in follow. Now let's look at medium cue elevation jump shots over an entire ball. These are difficult with a normal playing cue, so we are using phenolic tip jump cues for these. Here's a stop shot first. With harder bounces due to the higher jump, the cue ball will tend to pick up extra topspin with each table impact, so we need to hit below center to get stun at the object ball. Notice the tip contact point. Also notice how the cue ball starts off with slight bottom spin. To get draw, you need a good hit well below center, and you can't let the cue ball bounce too many times before reaching the object ball, otherwise the backspin will be lost and could eventually convert to topspin. You can see that if I just slow down the normal camcorder digital video footage, you can't see the spin on the ball very well. However, you can clearly see that the cue ball bounced only once after the initial bounce, on the way to the object ball. Here's the slow motion footage from the iPhone for two similar shots. For follow, a hit close to or slightly below center is appropriate. Remember, the cue ball picks up topspin on the first and any subsequent bounces. Now let's look at higher cue elevation jump shots, where you need to jump higher and sooner to get over an obstacle ball and land before getting to the object ball. In case you didn't notice earlier, we tape a small piece of cloth to the table to protect the cloth underneath since we are shooting so many shots from one location. At this cue elevation and higher, it can be easier to use an underhand dart grip and stroke. See the jump shot resource page in the FAQ section at billiards.colostate.edu for more information and demonstrations concerning this technique. At higher cue elevations, the tip contact point must be even farther below center to get stun at the object ball. Notice the below center hit, which would normally create significant backspin. Here, almost all of the backspin is lost during the first bounce into the table off the tip. Here's a draw shot. Here, you need a below center hit, and you can't let the cue ball bounce too many times on the way to the object ball. I'm using less cue elevation and more speed than with the previous shot to cause a longer jump and less bounce. The lower elevation and fewer bounces both help the backspin stay on the cue ball.
Notice how the cue ball lands only once, just before the object ball. When you need even more draw, it is best to hit the object ball on the fly with no bounce, although that wasn't done here. To get follow on a short high jump like this, you need high cue elevation to allow the cue ball to develop topspin on the first and subsequent bounces. If you attempt to hit the cue ball above center at such a high cue elevation, you will jam the cue ball into the table and it won't jump. Here, I'm actually using a below center hit, but again, the cue ball will pick up topspin during the first and subsequent bounces and follow forward. Notice how the cue ball starts with slight topspin off the first bounce, even with the below center hit. Here's a similar shot where the cue ball develops even more topspin as it bounces several times before reaching the object ball. Jeremiah and I hope you enjoyed our video. For much more information and demonstrations related to jump shots, see the resource page in the FAQ section at billiards.colostate.edu.